Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to week number five. Uh, what I want to go through with you here today is just a little kind of overview about the things we talked to, about over the last four weeks to really just kind of get you refocused. So if again, you did our six week kickstart, this is the start of week number 11 with us, hopefully for you. Um, and you've been now, whether you've been trying and failing for the last decade, or this is your first endeavor ever, if so, well, you don't know what you've avoided by coming here first. I'm so freaking excited for you. Um, but you're getting involved in the fitness industry, or you are in one way or another. So you're probably paying attention to these things. So you're, you're, maybe your algorithm, your Instagram feed is changing, right? And you're getting all these tips and tricks and meal prep hacks and exercise hacks and do this for your booty and this. And I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm actually talking about. I'm a cynic. What can I tell you? Um, if you guys want to know, I'll tell you a little personal note um, just about me. So I, I work in the fitness industry, obviously. Um, you know, I, I've staked my entire life on being good at helping people improve their lives and celebrate freedom and fitness. Um, I absolutely hate our industry. I can't stand it. I the show there's. I don't want to say that there's no good things about it. Cause obviously, there's a lot of good things I love about it. I love the power that it can carry. But our industry as a whole, not not the personal trainers. The personal trainers, ninety percent of the time, are uh, who are really making a career out of it. Great, but just I don't love it. It sucks. It's a sucky industry. It really is it's unregulated, which is a good and bad thing. Um, we're going to talk about that actually a week from today and buzzwords and lingo, and you'll get a lot more of that. Um, but it, it can be very, very distracting because there's so many things, right? Obviously, this is nuanced. Obviously, stress, sleep, hunger, you know, you know, calories, macros, learning how to do a squat. Like there's, there's just a lot going on. So seeking knowledge is great. Getting knowledge through social media is fantastic. But I want to tell you the things that matter and everything else doesn't matter. I'm going to give you a short list of things that matter that I want you to think about this week, or you know, some, one of them is gonna pop in your head like that. That's the thing that I'm, that I'm struggling with. Focus on that this week. That's all I want. That's all today's talk is, is very short, because everything else you're seeing and learning um, probably doesn't matter, right? There, every, you know, if I wanna get clicks and likes from you, if me making money and my livelihood is based on how many people like something and, and watch it and go, oh, I need more of this, I wanna push you fear. If you don't do this thing, if you don't do this thing, you're, you're not going to be successful. So you better pay attention to me. That's the fitness industry. Okay. So, um, you get a lot of that and you don't get a lot of, all right, this don't really matter, but it's a cool little trick. So here's what, here's what matters. Your steps on average, the amount of steps you're getting on average as your total movement, right? So if you sit at a desk, it's probably pretty low. If you're somebody like a teacher, you're moving around a lot and maybe it's higher. If you're a waitress or a waiter at a restaurant, it's probably good, right? Um, that number is an exact 7,000 is the number for longevity. Um, but it probably needs to go up on average. And if you, if you have a, one of these fancy things on your wrist that tracks it, um, look at your days where you're lowest and start there. Don't try and do more every day, but look at the day that's the lowest. That's probably what's dragging the average down the most. Get it up. So probably on Sunday, take a 20 minute walk, um, or Sunday and Saturday or, or whatever. Um, get your steps up on average for fat loss. That's going to be the first thing you're going to look at. Strength training um, twice a week. If you're not doing that consistency right consistently right now, start doing that. Figure it out. Change your schedule. Do whatever you have to do. If you need to learn something, reach out to us. We'll help you learn the skills you need to learn, but you have the programming with how-to videos. Hopefully, that's very helpful to you. Um, but strength training twice a week for muscle maintenance. Um, we're going to talk about that in two weeks, why that's critical. I know it's towards the end, um, but we do that for a very, very good reason. Um, you know, hormones as well. It's a big thing. Um, and some form of movement to make yourself feel good. If it's one of those other two things, great. Um, go to a yoga class, get a massage, do whatever. Make your, your body's got to feel good if we're going to use it a lot. So that's movement, right? Steps, resistance training. Not 5,000 other things you're going to see on TikTok. Protein plus calories. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. It doesn't matter what the carbs and fats shake, shake out to be. It does not. It does not. It does not. It does not. Even if it's a low gly or high glycemic carbs and it's a pure sugar, guess what? The, the poison is in the dose. It's how much. So if you're controlling the amount, the glycemic index is now null and void. So we can shove that wherever it needs to go. Um, I told you guys I'm a little cynical about these things. Because um, in the context, the context changes and context matters. Protein plus calories with your nutrition. 
right amount of protein and they're the right amount of average calories. That's it, right? Remember the nutrition hierarchy? You know, those things, that's important still, but protein plus calories. Do the sleep stuff we talked about last week. Drink more water, probably. Um, those are the things to do, okay? Mentally, have grace with yourself, but have accountability with yourself. Um, with yourself. Probably need to have more grace with yourself about feeling bad, but you probably also need to have accountability and address the things that you feel bad about, right? You're not gonna get progress from wishing and hoping. I promise you that. That's not gonna happen. So you have to have accountability. If you need extra accountability, that's why our coaches exist. Um, you know, get a workout buddy, do something. Um, next thing, avoid the 5,000 tips, tricks, hacks um, from drugged up, photoshopped influencers. I can promise you I've seen behind the curtain. They're all on drugs. They're all taking steroids. They're all photoshopping the crap out of their things. Okay. Like 90% of people, it's so rare to find somebody that's legit. Um, and that's why we love them when we do find them. So just stop worrying about all of those things that, that come towards you. Um, and then the, the next thing is just to stay focused and keep doing little things consistently. Stop trying to make huge efforts. Small things consistently. If you need to get organized, get organized. If you need to prepare more, prepare more. If you need to drink more water, whatever, do whatever needs to be done and take a small step today and do them consistently. Stop trying to make huge efforts. Um, and that's it, that's the list. So the last thing I want to uh, kind of give you a little uh, maybe tidbit on is your environment. What kind of things are around you is gonna have a massive influence on your behaviors? If all of your coworkers were in great shape and took 30 minute walks on their lunch break and went to the gym afterwards, you would probably do those much easier, right? So something that we know is that our environment has a huge impact on our decision making. Um, I don't think that's something that is necessarily super profound in terms of something that, that you're mind blown that you, that you probably never think, thought of before, however, it is something that we fail to consider and address when we wanna make changes to our habits, to our lifestyle. In your case, you wanna lose body fat. Now, when you look at your environment, there's a lot of different bubbles um, when we talk about your environment. There's your physical environment, which is what's in your kitchen, right? What kind of foods are available to you while you're home? Um, you know, what physical activities are the people around you doing, your relationships, right? Your spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend or uh, friends and family or roommates or whatever it is, you know, what are those, what are those people's lifestyles look like? It's going to have some effect on you. Uh, and it's at least going to be something that you look at. And for those of us who are incredibly intentional yet about what we're doing, and I say yet, because that is a big key in, in achieving long-term uh, success with any fitness goal is you have to have self-awareness and, and say like, Hey, I am doing this thing, even though everybody else is doing that. That's a muscle that you'll build and that's come, but it's important to recognize first so that you can overcome it. You need to understand that the things that are around you are going to have a profound impact on what it is that you decide to eat for breakfast, uh, where you go for lunch, um, you know, whether or not you skip the gym or go that day. If you lived with uh, you know, four or five bodybuilders, right? And you know, there, there's actually, there's a famous gym in the Middle East called Oxygen. Um, and what it is, is it's set up, it's literally, it's, it, the gym itself is nothing special. It's that they, everybody lives there, stays there, the kitchen is there, and everybody's of the same mindset. And it's like, why do all these people go over there and come back and they just made transformations like they've been trying to achieve for a decade and all of a sudden it's instantly, you know, they do the same stuff, it's the same food, it's the same workouts, but everything is cranked up because their environment is so hyper and focused on a goal. Now, what am I suggesting to you? Am I suggesting that you get a new job, that you ask your coworkers to work out with you, um, that you, you know, throw your husband or wife in the river because they keep, you know, asking for unhealthy dinner and don't support your goals? Not, not suggesting those things. Um, one thing that we can control is the things that we bring home. So we'll talk about that in a second. But what I want you to do is, you know, as we've just gone through this checklist of things that matter. Um, think about how your environment may influence those things, how your day is structured, your schedule, how does that influence those things? If you have a change coming to mind right now, of something that you could do that you would know would make a difference, really, really put a lot of emphasis and importance on that. I would prioritize that because you know, as much coaching as we can do and ideas and tips as we can give you, that thing that just popped in your head right now is probably the unlock for you 
taking that next leap. This is why people get stalled out. They get all this motivation, they get all this emotion, they take an action, they join a gym, you, you start working with us. And that gets you to here. And then to make that next step up, you need that to occur again. You need something, you know, you were sick of something. That's, that's generally why most people find us. You know, sometimes people are like, hey, this would be really fun to do. It's probably one out of 100, you know. Uh, most times, it's, and myself included, it's I'm sick of feeling this way. I'm sick of taking this medication. I'm sick of having this confidence level. I'm sick of feeling like I could achieve more, but I'm not. So what I want to stress to you is in terms of your environment, in terms of this checklist that we just talked about, these things that we could be doing, if there's some form of inspiration up here, I want you to act on it this week. Um, you know, you, you have information now that, that you can trust and that you know are right things to do. I'll give you an example. For me, it was waking up first thing in the morning, not having my phone, reading, and hydrating, basically. That starts my day in a very different manner than if I sleep in a little bit, hit snooze, whatever. And it's really hard to do. I Listen, I'm a heavy sleeper. I could zombie walk 40 feet across a room, get, you know, have to do a math puzzle on my phone to turn my alarm off and uh, have no problem going back to sleep. Um, but I commit to doing that because I understand that when I do that, everything else flows from that. That was my kind of thing. It's like, man, if you set that alarm for 5 a.m. and you wake up, and you get some work on yourself done, and you take care of yourself, every other day is better, and then things compound. So that's something I want you to consider. And the final thing on your environment is uh, just a nutrition hack, is don't bring unhealthy foods home. Um, you know, not going to the grocery store hungry is definitely a good idea, um, but don't bring Oreos home. Don't bring ice cream home. Don't bring snack cakes and bagels and all these other things that maybe you're like, man, I got to stop eating this. Like, this is killing me. Stop buying it. And, and if you have kids, um, you know, truth be told, I don't have kids and I get told, you know, obviously um, how difficult it is. But we do know parents. I do know plenty of parents that I've worked with that their kids eat healthy. And here's the thing. I get that's a struggle. I get that's a fight. Um, you know, I haven't experienced it myself. But what I can tell you for certain is that if you start to influence your, your family's eating, it's going to make your life easier. They're going to be healthier. You're going to be healthier. It's worth the battle, whatever battle that it is. So if you're you're tempted to say, well, my kids won't eat this or my kids won't eat that. Um, you know, I grew up in a household where it was, if you didn't eat it, you got one of these for breakfast the next day. Um, you know, <laughs> my parents didn't beat me, but uh, it was it was very much not an option to go have a snack cake or something like that or, or you know, have dessert if you didn't eat your healthy food. So um, that's something that is very, very powerful that people avoid. They avoid that situation. So um, if you can, uh, if you would, I know you can, if you would, when you go grocery shopping, when you look at a food and you're like, that's something that's not going to support my goals, don't put it in your cart and see if you eat it this week. I'm going to have a feeling that you have less problems eating that food. Now, what you will experience is you go, I'm hungry, now I have no, no idea what to eat and I need to cook something. And that's a very good place to be. It is uncomfortable, but it takes discipline and those are the decisions and the actions that is going to change your life. So um, lean into those things. If you had an idea pop on your head this week, prioritize it, commit to it, and pay attention to your environment and see what changes you could possibly make this week. And I promise you're gonna have more success than you ever imagined just from those few small things.